So here's a look at the Game King 2019 and 1 hardware. Here's the case of it. We've got a metal case, uh, exhaust fan on the front, nothing on the sides. Here's the back of it. These two pots here on the top are to adjust the left and right audio off of the JAMA harness. The audio on this is extremely loud. Remove the top and as you can see it's just a PC. Uh, it's got a Pentium 4 processor in it. It came with one stick of RAM 512 megabytes. I've got an additional stick installed into it. You've got a solid state hard drive. Uh, basically just a off the shelf components for all of it with the exception of this which is the board that has the JAMA interface pin out on it. You've also got two dip switches, two sets of dip switches with four switches each on the left and on the right and then over here in the corner um, you have a small test switch that brings up uh, the video out menu. One of the main things that I wanted to point out about this that is not very documented on the internet, even though these things have been out for several years, and there are a couple of reviews, one or two videos about them. Nobody's actually talked about the operation of it, and that's why that I figured I would bring this up. Uh, first question, can you just slap this thing into a cabinet and it work? Is it JAMA standard? No, and I'll tell you why. First reason, and this is not covered really at all in the little manual, that it comes with because the manual is using mostly outdated information. Like most of the multi-game boards nowadays, this allows you to have all six action buttons in a Street Fighter style layout for both players straight off of the JAMA connection without having an additional harness. Now all the descriptions that I had read of the Game King, including here in the manual, and I'll see if I can find it for you, the older versions of this had an additional harness, as you can see right here in the manual, an additional wiring harness where the button portion of the JAMA harness was standard, and then it had an additional wiring harness for the fifth and sixth action button that you had to actually bring off of the board itself. Now this is updated and they, the pin out is the same as if you had a uh, Pandora's box or a Game Elf or a Blue Elf, any of those type multi-game boards where you've got the three normal action buttons and then you've got the fourth action button which is usually used on a Neo Geo game and then the fifth and sixth action buttons are your second and third to last buttons on the harness and then your last one is a ground. Now you might want to check your if you buy this and you plug it in and it doesn't work on your machine or it acts as if one button is always pressed down that's probably because your cabinet is rigged up so that uh, the next to last pin is being used as a ground instead of an action so you've got something grounding itself out. So on the button portion of it it's wired up exactly like a Pandora's box is as far as the six action buttons off the harness. So that's something to keep in mind. The other kind of weird unexpected thing about this is where it has stereo audio out from the JAMA harness without an additional connector. It's wired up like a multi-slot Neo Geo board is where that you've got um, instead of on your JAMA harness normally one pin is positive and one pin is negative and that goes to your speaker, your one speaker. Well on this instead of it being 
one pin positive and one pin negative, it's one pin positive for the left and one pin positive for the right, and you have to pull your ground from somewhere else. So if you have a normal mono cabinet set up with one speaker, whenever you plug this in, instead of it being fed a positive and a negative current to wire up the speaker, it's going to be fed two positives, and which may end up back feeding into the system and messing with the audio amp or you know do something to your speaker it's not something that i would recommend um one thing that i wanted to point out also and this is a problem that i had ran into whenever i first got this and i'd actually seen other people on other forums mention this and they kind of wondered why if you see this big ugly homemade wire that i've got sticking out of here coming from here onto the underside of this board. The Game King allows you to have four different types of video out through the JAMA harness. You can have regular VGA out, which is, uh, what, 31 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz. You can have NTSC and PAL 15 kilohertz video out, which is like a, a normal arcade monitor. And then you can also have the Sega monitor output, which I think is 24 kilohertz or something like that. And the way that it does this is it gets the video signal from the PC motherboard. It hijacks it from the actual video out on the motherboard and it reroutes this to this PC to JAMA connector, it does the video change, the processing or whatever term you would be proper to use in this context, it changes the signal from a regular VGA out signal to the NTSC or PAL 15 kilohertz or to the Sega 24 kilohertz through this adapter. Now this wiring harness plugs into the VGA out and it goes back around and connects to the PC to JAMA connector here. Now whenever I got mine in from the seller they did not include this cable even though the pictures of the item showed it the actual they forgot to include it and I've read on forum posts other people that had run into the same problem they wouldn't have any video out and they ran through all the different settings and, and never could get it. And that's why if you, most of the pictures, if you see a picture of this, this board, and sometimes they'll just have the thing hanging down here. It won't actually be plugged in. It'll just be hanging down. That's what it is. If you want to use anything but VGA 31 kilohertz and, and have it come through the JAMA harness, you have to run this little cable into the VGA out that goes into the top of this connector and of course this is a horrible little gobbed up thing that I made myself um, this board the the uh, PC motherboard if you look at this it's a mess on the inside you've got hot glue over the RAM chip and all these other wires that come out. That's not me. That's the way this thing is made. Basically what this thing here does, this PC to JAMA interface, it connects to the power supply uh, pins so that the machine comes on. As soon as it gets power, it comes on. You don't have an on and off switch or anything like that. As soon as you plug it in, it gets power. There's no way to turn it off unless you physically turn the power off to the power supply, the, the plug-in. It also has, you can kind of see it here, um, a connection to the USB port pins, which is all glued up. And then it also has a connection, I can't get to it from here, but it goes underneath the motherboard and is wired into the PS2 and mouse um, keyboard connectors so that it basically just hijacks your physical um, connectors that you would have on a motherboard and routes them into this and translates 
um, keyboard inputs or whatever to a regular joystick thing. Now, one of the things that I found out that I was not aware of, apparently, of course, this is just a regular PC running a pirated version of Windows that blocks it so that you do not see the Windows boot up, you do not see the BIOS screen come on whenever you turn power on to the system. But also, apparently whenever they hooked this wire into the PS2 ports, and then where they've got this wire plugged into the USB slots, if you've got this thing turned on, you cannot access, you can't just stick a keyboard in here or a mouse, or you can't just stick a USB mouse or keyboard in here and get it to exit out of the front end and access windows. I guess they physically got the traces cut that goes to these. So, not that an op arcade operator would need to do that. That's something that you would do as a home enthusiast. But if you have any idea of actually accessing the hard drive, putting new stuff on it, taking old stuff off of it, whatever. You probably have to physically remove the hard drive and plug it up to something. You won't be able to fire this thing up in your cabinet and plug a USB mouse or keyboard into it or plug a wired uh, regular PS2 keyboard or mouse into it and access it. Also, this little board right here, you can see, I think it's glued on there. Or screwed on there. No, it actually has screws, but it's it's screwed in to the uh, looks like the parallel port on here. Um, I'm not really sure what it function that it does with the uh, PC to JAMA connector, but it's screwed in here, and then there is the connection to the USB pins. Here's the connection to the uh, PS2 keyboard and mouse pins. Here's the connection to the power pins. Whenever I got this, it didn't have a battery in it for the BIOS. I don't really know that that makes any difference or not, but I went ahead and put one in there. The, the uh, stick of RAM that I put in it, the only one that I had laying around was another 512 megabyte stick, and I put it in there. One would think that that would help the... Uh, performance of the games, but I didn't actually play it enough with the default 512 megabytes in it to, to notice the difference. It came with a, a fan on the heat sink and then also a fan on the outside here. The one, Whenever it arrived, this fan was actually broken, and so I just pulled it off and, and put an old CPU fan that I had in there. Also, as I mentioned before, there's there's no buttons or anything to turn the unit on and off, which to me is is probably going to lead to issues because you're running a Windows PC and you're not shutting it down whenever you cut it off. So I wish that they at least had left the USB connectors or, or something hooked up so me as, a, as just a home enthusiast using this in my basement and not in a, a revenue operation could access it. If you see these online, they run for about 200 American dollars. Um, shipping is usually about a hundred. So if you buy one of these brand new, you're look you're probably gonna sink anywhere between two fifty to three hundred in it, depending on where you find it. I think that they're worth it if you don't want to fool with building a main PC and fool with a bunch of settings. Um, I have seen a version of this that's supposed to be the exact same thing, um, but whenever they sell it they sell it without this black metal case. It looks more like uh, just basically the motherboard sandwiched uh, on here. There's like two pieces of it, and it doesn't have this case. And it has these little pegs on the corners that separate the two boards. I didn't buy one of those. I did notice that the cost on them was cheaper. And I had also read that the CPU that is in them and the amount of RAM in, in them is actually lower than what it is in this one here that comes in the black case. And so I would say that that probably accounts for the lower price on them. 
And just in case you're wondering, if whenever you get this, if yours does come with this cord that plugs into the VGA out, and you hook this thing up through your JAMA harness, whenever you turn it on, of course, it by default, the first time you power it on, it's set up as VGA out. One really nice thing about this is if you press this button on the corner here to go to the uh, menu where you change the video output, you change it by using up and down on the joystick and, to, and then A to select it. And if you have the speakers hooked up correctly, one kind of cool thing is, is as you go up and down the menu, it audibly says what setting that it's on. If it's on VGA, a voice says VGA, NTSC, PAL, Sega, and that way you can tell if you're not getting any video, well, is it my monitor or is it my cable or is it my setup? Because you can tell if it's on the setting that you need it to be.